Okay, we're going to catalog and we're going to use Quick Cat first because it could be really good, especially 300 books you're faced with. Items, Quick Cat, and what's the title on that book that you set aside to start with? Is your scanner. So we've got the title, which is required, record type book, always the same, G is always there. We clicked here, we added the next LMCA barcode. Could you read me the ISBN? Is there a 978? That one. Yep. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, we can put the call number. You is this a fiction book? It is, isn't it? All right. So I would use fic if it were me. So I'm going to put down here in the H and I am recording subfield 852H fic. The I. Who's what's the author's last name? The first one. What's the last name? Is it H A S? Only need three letters. And I am recording. So the H will always, for fiction book, have thick. The cutter will always have the first three letters of the author's last name. Do you want to put a price in the record? You don't have to. Okay. You don't have to. Uh, most libraries lately aren't because if somebody loses it, they look up the replacement cost. And that's what you would charge. But we'll put it in. So what we've done is we put the title, the barcode, the call number, three letters FIC, HAS, the price up. No, you don't have to. And we're going to click Save. All right. Now let me show you something. I'm going to be kind of fast here. Items, let's go to the quick entry list. You see, there it is, right? In about five minutes or less, I bet that'll be gone. It's going out now, and all those resources that I added, it's going and looking for this book right now as we speak. Okay? Now, let me show you the other way while we're waiting for this. Do you have another book? So now we're going to do it where we're going to look for the book semi-manually. Items. Now we just did Quick Cat. Now we're going to go right to Z Import. And you'll, you can decide what you like better. They, they're both fine. Some people use Quick Cat exclusively. Some people use Z Import. Whatever. I'm clicking Z Import. And we'll start with the schools union. These are all your resources. We'll just start with school. This is where you would normally type your ISBN. I'll, I'll put it in if you could read it to me. Yeah, you'll scan it. You don't want to be typing those, reading those numbers all day long. Let's see if we find it. Is it Hug a Tree Geronimo? Scholastic 2018. So to catalog this book, it's not going out looking for it. We just found it. By the way, if it came up no record found, then you could put in the author's last name, Stilton, Hug Tree or Hug Tree or Geron. Put a couple words of the title in. If you don't find it by Isbin, you could do it that way. So now to catalog it, we kick, click the title. And now we'll see, does the book look like that? Great. Now we're going, this is the bibliographic record. This is the record how people will find books searching your catalog, if they were to search it. Wow, that's a long field. Okay, I'll show you why this is good. There's the author. 
Ah, uniform. This must have been in Italian at some point or Spanish, maybe. Huh, interesting. Hug a tree. Oh, it's Italian, I think, yeah. Uh, so somebody did a great job here. They put the Italian version in. Huh, cool. Hug a tree, Geronimo, Geronimo, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 108 pages. Um, Geronimo Stilton, grades two through four. Grades four. A 500 note, just the basic note, something about the book which says it's based on an original idea by this person. 520. It's a summary. Tells students and teachers what the book is about. And also, all these words are indexed. So if somebody said they wanted a book about an oak tree and they typed oak tree, this book would come up. There's the translated from Italian. Here's the author. If somebody wanted a book about trees, this book would come up. Mice, farms. This is a really good record. I would call this a very robust record. It's got a lot of access points. So if a teacher wants secrets, trees, mice, whatever, they'd find it. And you have your 521 um, uh, reading level right here. Where is it? There it is, 521. Okay. This is a great record. Exceptional record, really. Wow. Wow. Wow, man. I'm sorry. It's really an intense record. I've not seen that many. Okay. We like the record. It's very robust. However, if you didn't like it and you thought, man, I need more subject headings, you can go over here and click Add Data Field. Like, I'm just going to go here by this 650. I'm going to click Add a Data Field, and I could put in a data field, which you don't have to do hardly ever. And you could make up your own words. If you think, like, how, how would a kid search for this? Well, trees or mice. If there's some word that just isn't in that record, you might want to add it yourself. I doubt you'll have to do that very often. Okay? All right, great. I'm not going to add anything. I can't think of anything. It's such a, a robust record. We're good. Now we go to, the, that's the bib record that drives people finding it in your catalog. So now we go to the holding record, which represents what you're holding in your hand. And here we are. Now, is this book fiction or nonfiction? It's fiction. So we're going to go FIC. We're taking out 813, which is a Dewey version of saying fic, but most school librarians use fic, not a Dewey. For a, for a fiction book. And then STI. I put the other one in in caps. On your books, is, are they putting in the author's three letters in caps? All right, let's put it in caps. I, I think it's better. Students can see it better. So there's FIC, STI, right? That's just like that quick cat. Now the piece, that's your barcode. Watch this. See how it's going to be 6061? That tells me something. Uh, Cynthia, that tells me that the book we put in with Quick Cat was found. Pretty, I think so, We're pretty much. We're going to say OK. Now, if you click Save, it's the end of the day, you're leaving, you could click Save. If you click Save and Exit, it takes you back to catalog another book in hand. And I am recording. I'm going to click Save and Exit, Close. Watch, it's going to go right back to Z Import ready for another book to add. Okay? So then we would go to the next book. So if you have a day where you, you have no students and you want to catalog most of the day, you just kept save and exit and go back and scan in another ISBN and keep moving along. But we're going to interrupt ourselves. I'm going to... So typically, and I'm recording, typically after you catalog, let's say you catalog 20 books today. Um, you can do this. You can go print the spine labels and the barcodes. So you'll do it like this. Admin, reports and tools. I am recording. Item acquisitions. What have we acquired? And when it opens, it'll be for today. There's two books. There's the two books we acquired. We put in your system today. There's their barcodes. Print item label sets right here. Most people, uh, it's up to you how you want to do it. Oh, I have to select the page. I have to select them. There we go. Print item label sets. 
you could print a label set which means you're going to use the barcode label as a spine label you'll just have to trim it because they're two and five inches is long so a spine label for a skinny book wouldn't be it'd go around the book so you have to decide do i want to use the long labels and trim them with a the scissors your call um, or i'm going to send you spine labels where you where they're smaller labels i'll send you that and you can decide but for today, let's just look at print label set, okay? So I'm going to print selected, and there you go. So here's the spine label right here, all right? And then you get two barcode labels. Now, you might not need, you don't need two. You really only need one. That's a little bit of a, where you don't really need the second one, but it'll print anyway, so you have to think about that. However, let me just go back. That's printing a label set. Let me show you a difference. Let's click print item labels. Let's just print the barcode label first. And it's nice to have the title, author, and call number on the label. Okay? So I click print barcode label. Print selected. There. There's animal rescue. There's hug a treat. They would print out on your labels. You pull them off. You stick them on the book. When you stick them on the book, it's a good idea to have a barcode label protector when you print your own. That way they don't get smudged up. They don't get, they don't pull off as easy. Um, and I'm going to send you information of those two. And you can buy everything from us if you want or go out on the net, Amazon, etc. So we just, let's just pretend we printed these. All right. So now I'm done printing this. Barcode. Now I'm going to print spine labels second because I made a decision to buy spine labels as opposed to using blank barcode labels for spines. So let's look at that. You'll see a difference. Print item labels, not barcodes. We already did that. Let's print spine labels. One by one and two thirds, eight across, six down. These are smaller and they're made for the spine of a book. Print selected. There. Now we just have these two printing spine labels. It's a good idea to have a whole bunch. So, by the way, uh, Cynthia, you could be cataloging for the next three weeks or whenever. You could catalog for oh, as long as you want, and then when the, the items come in, just save these on a book truck so that you, you can put the labels on. You know, you don't have to stop cataloging because you don't have the labels because we, we're, we didn't need to stop today. We, we already have that barcode label range, LMCA. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording.